Hi everyone, welcome to Cyberblog. I'm Cyber Settler. Today we are talking about the what happened in Western Australia. Recently, this was uh, May 24th. Uh, and historical archaeological sites were destroyed by an explosion uh, from uh, mining activities. Here is the news. This is uh, something I uh, uh, tweeted uh, last week. So it says, calls are growing for an immediate halt to mining operations in the Pilbara that have been approved under Western Australia's archaic Aboriginal heritage laws and the Senate will hold an urgent inquiry as international outrage from investors pushes big mining companies Rio Tinto and BHP into damage control. On Thursday, Guardian Australia revealed that BHP Billiton was poised to destroy at least 40 significant Aboriginal sites in the central Pilbara to expand its 4.5 billion south flank iron ore mine, even though it was aware the traditional owners are deeply opposed to the move. So this is uh, outrageous because uh, you have like these um, archaeological sites and heritage sites like uh, places that um, are considered um, valuable or sacred or important for the uh, local people and uh, they uh, they are poised to destroy them. Well, there's a list of, of sites that are um, uh, threatened. This particular one is uh, a 46,000 year old heritage site at Yukon Gorge in Western Australia. So, and this was, uh, the, the company was notified um, here we can read this from another um, article in The Guardian. It says Rio Tinto received permission under Section 18 of the state's Aboriginal Heritage Act to destroy two rock shelters dubbed Yukan 1 and Yukan 2 in December 2013. Two years earlier it signed a partnership agreement with the PKKP over the management of Brockman 4 iron ore mine on PKKP land. PKKP um, stands for um, Putu, Kunti, Kurama, and Pinikura. These are the like the, the people that um, live in Pilbara. And this, this, I think this, they, they are, uh, they are organized. Uh, but it seems that this, um, what happened there was that, well, first of all, we have like this um, law, this um, Aboriginal Heritage Act that is supposedly drafted to, to protect these sites. But it seems that it has some sort of loophole where um, a company can receive uh, the 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 required permission to go and destroy land that otherwise uh, could be deemed as as heritage land that uh, should not be destroyed. So it says in. 2012, when Rio Tinto was finalizing the design of its mine pit, its heritage team requested that a buffer zone be placed around Yukan Gorge. The company developed four options for the mine pit and chose the one which directly impacted on Yukan Gorge. The PKKP were not made aware until a parliamentary inquiry, which began last month, that there was ever an option for the mine which did not involve destroying the site. The report found that Rio Tinto could have better communicated with the PKKP 
when finalizing the pit design and applying for uh, section 18 approval in 2012 and 2013. This section 18, this is the, the some, somehow the loophole of this law. It said it also could have uh, reviewed its plan when it received an ethnographic report in 2013 that say that you can gorge and poorly Kuti Creek area, including the rock shelters, were of a high significance to the Putu Kunti Kurama in the old days and still today. And in August 2014, when it received a pre preliminary report from archaeologist Dr. Michael Slack, who conducted a salvage dig that you can too was one of the most archaeological significant sites in Australia. It said Rio Tinto should also have reviewed its plans in December 2018 when it received a final report from Slack which stated that Yukan 2 had been occupied continually for 46,000 years, almost twice as long as previously estimated and said it has the amazing potential to radically change our understanding of the earliest human behavior in Australia. This, this is a tragedy. Um, it's not only a, trage a tragedy for the PKKP uh, people in, in Pilbara, but also um, for the whole world and for science. Uh, I mean, um, we're talking about 46,000 years. This is this goes way beyond uh, the oldest uh, human artifacts that we know of in in um, in many parts of of the world, right? It, like uh, I think this this um, I don't know if uh, yes, these are comparable, perhaps uh, with with. Uh, uh cave paintings in europe and some places in in africa but this is this is really a, a an um, irreparable loss right you cannot make for this the company received Another ethnographic report in March of 2020, which reiterated that the site was of high significance to the PKKP and found the rock shelters were a connected complex rather than a number of isolated cultural heritage sites. Around the same time, the heritage worker for the PKKP reiterated the significance of the site to the local mine manager and the PKKP had uh, requested permission to visit while we still can. So this changes realities in the period from 2018 should have prompted a review within uh, Rio Tinto of the implications of the new ethnographic and archaeological reports for the Bachmann 4 mine development plans and especially their timing and sequencing, the report found. Such a review should have been initiated even in the absence of a formal request by the PKKP. These steps were not taken, an important opportunity for pausing and reconsidering options were missed until the PKKP formally raised their concerns in May 2020, by which time, as described in our submission to the inquiry, it was no longer safe and practicable to protect the sites. Okay, so the reason, well, uh, here in the article, it, it also analyzes what's, what's uh, wrong. But one thing that it's um, amazing to me is that uh, people, we are so hope, hopeless uh, against uh, corporations, right? Like you have like these big corporations that would um, um, 
get some uh, approval to do whatever activity and no matter what they they will do it it, it also um, reminds me of the standing rock um, conflict in the United States where they wanted to um, build this pipeline that went through um, Native American land and pe people seem so hopeless uh, against this this uh, this activities uh, it, and what what uh, is really sad here is that how how much money are we talking about uh, we we will get to that shortly but the destruction i mean it's not we cannot compare uh what what is being destroyed by um by these activities and the profit they generate so uh, here uh, returning back to the first article it says but their conduct has been perfectly legal both companies received ministerial consent order to destroy the sites under West Australia outdated Aboriginal Heritage Laws. The Aboriginal, Aboriginal Heritage Act was introduced in 1972 to protect sacred or otherwise culturally significant sites from destruction by the mining and pastoral industry. It developed a process for registering sites, making it illegal to discover a site and not notify the government. Section 18 allows mining companies and other landholders to apply for ministerial permission to destroy Aboriginal heritage. It does not give traditional owners a right of appeal or even a right of reply. In, case, in many cases, as with BHP, the registration of sites and permission to destroy them is sought in a single application. The Aboriginal Cultural Materials Committee makes a recommendation to the Aboriginal Affairs ministers, Minister who grants consent for a site to be destroyed. Between July 1, 2010 and March 1, 2010, the ACMC considered 463 Section 18 applications from mining companies none were refused imagine that 463 applications that are like um, taking advantage of this i call it loophole because i don't have another term for this because this is um it, it's um it's a law that it's uh, made to to benefit uh, companies to benefit the corporations and it gives little um, power to the communities uh, where these activities are are taking place and after that we uh, we knew of this uh, of uh, some some sort of um, penalty they received here in this article rio tinto chiefs lose millions in bonuses over destruction of yukon gorge and it says rio tinto chief Exe executive jan sebastian Jakes has lost almost five million dollars in bonuses, and uh, the head of Rio Tinto's Australian Iron Ore Group will lose more than one million over the destruction of a 46,000-year-old Aboriginal heritage site at Yukon Gorge, after an internal review found systemic failures in the cultural heritage management system. The mining company destroyed two rock shelters in Yukon Gorge in the Pilbara region of Western Australia on May 24, despite having received five separate reports on the significance of the sites, both archaeologically and to the local Putukunti Kurama and 
Pinicura people since 2013. And uh, yeah, but the thing is that these um, penalties are not like the, the this this penal penalties are here it says pocket change for this for for these uh, people they earn so much money uh like they give all these bonuses to them for uh, to these uh, managers and uh, they will get as i uh, say like a, a slap on the wrist and that's it um they are um they say that there are other consequences to their actions that involve, I don't know, taking away um, like some cer certificates from them. I don't know, but really, and, and also we see in these um, articles reported that, that uh, the, um, the shareholders are outraged right um they say that shareholders uh they they say that um for example here by by day's end following public outcry the company say it would not go ahead without further extensive consultation with the traditional or or owners the pinjima people so they say here that they 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 would they will not do it but still there is there is a a, a risk so let's read here because they say that there's still um risk that they will destroy other sites now one of the foremost indigenous academic in Australia, Professor Marcia Langton says public attention is all that is keeping some companies from destroying many more sites. Langton, who has had a long involvement in research on the mining industry and has advised several companies on indigenous engagement said, all of the existing authorities to destroy remain valid. She believes the companies that have them are just beating their time and waiting for public attention to move to something else and they will go ahead and destroy hundreds of sites, among them sites as important as Yukon Gorge. Mining companies have been granted permission to damage 463 sites in the past 10 years. They include the cave that was used to prove the theory that the iron ore reached Hammersley Range was used as a climate refuge at the end of the last ice age between 18,000 and 12,000 years ago, around the same time the clay bison were sculpted in the Tuk du Audubert in France. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. Mining firms BHP. Rio Tinto and Fortescue have all said in the wake of the international backlash against the destruction of Yukon Gorge, they will not proceed without further consultation with traditional owners, but they retain the final say. Traditional owner groups say they are left appealing to the mining company's better nature, and Langton says consultation isn't enough. So they consult, and then what? The traditional owners still have no rights. I think at the very least, and this is what they are refusing to do, the Western Australian government should reconsider all of the Section 18 approvals, which allow companies to interfere with heritage sites and give the traditional owners a right of appeal because they have negotiated their rights away under pressure. The Western Australia Aboriginal Affairs Minister Ben Wyatt says he has no plans to audit all the approvals granted under the state heritage laws. 
Doing so would be a lot of work, he told the Senate inquiry into Yukon Gorge. There's nothing I can do legally to intervene upon them and they may or may not be utilized. So this is the situation we're in. So the, the, the local community is appealing to the better nature of these corporations. What nature is that? They, they only have one nature and that's capitalism, right? They do everything for profit. And if, if the penalties they get is just a, a slap on the wrist, then for them, there's no reason why not to do it. Why they do it? Because they can. And this is what the government is there for, right? The government is there, I think, to protect uh, these sites, to protect people, to protect um, things that cannot be uh, gauged, like uh, things that cannot have a price. But we are living in, in a world where the the economic interests are supreme now and politicians are just um, doing um, the private interest bidding uh, all the time so it's it's really sad to see these uh, archaeological sites go away like this uh, and it's a symptom of our society so focused on money it's, and we we are destroying things that money cannot buy and I hope uh, it will be uh, not too late when people realize what is happening like what what uh, we are losing and we're letting um, corporations to do. okay so that's everything I hope you enjoy the video and hope to see you in the next one this is Cyber Settler signing off.